Well, we're going to get back into the Word again tonight. Amen. Father, we thank You for Your goodness and for Your mercy. Thank You, Lord, as we come before Your throne of grace to find help and to obtain mercy in time of need. That all the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yes and amen. And so, Lord, we come in faith, nothing wavering, nothing doubting. Father, knowing that if we ask You for bread, You will not give us a stone. Lord, You said that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So we thank You, Lord, tonight for utterance in the Holy Ghost that I should open my mouth and speak forth as the oracles of God. A word in season. A word of faith. God, that the Holy Spirit would cause the wisdom of God to come into our hearts, to come into our minds. That, Lord, we would not panic or be full of anxiety. For You've not given unto us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So regardless of what type of commotion or uh, stress or disturbance is going on in the world, we thank You, Lord, that there's perfect peace in Your presence. That there's perfect peace united with Christ. And help us, Lord, to walk in that peace and the wisdom of God. And we're careful to thank You and give You all the praise, all the glory for always causing us to triumph through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, it is it in His name that we pray. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go again to Galatians chapter 5. I believe we're on part 3. Uh, this is the third Wednesday night in a row the Lord has given us looking at this topic of faith that works by love or through love. And uh, it's one of the lessons that the Lord keeps bringing me back to. Those of you that have been here any length of time know that we've taught on this subject matter uh, constantly and again and again. And uh, when it seems like that our faith is challenged, the Lord is always bringing me back to this foundation of the love of God. And so we're going to look again at our main text, Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. The Apostle Paul wrote the church at Galatia to settle a dispute and to cause peace. Yes, Lord. Father, even that you would settle disputes and cause peace to come into cities where the enemy's trying to stir up conflict and strife. For we know, Lord, that a house divided against itself cannot stand. But Lord, we thank you for the wisdom of God to come upon our leaders and our leadership. Father, that we would not be divided as a nation, we'd not be divided as people. But Father, that we would uh, come under the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for uh, uh, peace. We speak peace to the storm in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So he uh, wrote this to settle a dispute that they were having in the church that the new uh, Gentile Christians would have to uh, be circumcised or follow the dictates of Judaism. So to respond to that, Paul said in verse 6, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. And the way the Lord said it to me is that if your faith is not grounded or motivated by the love of God, then it simply will not work. <laughs> it's very simple. And so heart motives are always important. And the Amplified of verse 6 says, For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. Now again, we'll make this note because it's very important. That uh, even before the law of Moses, uh, God started the tradition with Abraham that on the eighth day the males were circumcised. And it was a sign of a blood covenant with God. So the Jewish people trusted in the sign of circumcision. And that delineated them or to distinguish them from the unclean or the Gentiles. But when Jesus hung on the cross at Calvary and shed his blood for the sins of all mankind. And... Uh, Peter was sent by the Holy Spirit into the, into the house of Cornelius, the first Gentile convert. Yeah. And so thank God that because he was saved and his household, that we're sitting here tonight, hearing the gospel, hearing the good news, born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And uh, so our confidence is not in uh, keeping a set of rules 
uh, under under uh, Judaism, but it is in Christ Jesus. It is in the blood of Jesus our faith is in, and and His sacrifice on the cross. But if we're in Christ, neither circumcision or uncir or circumcision counts for anything but faith. And here's four components we we went over last. Uh, Wednesday that you've probably heard before, but if you've heard it before, we're watering the Word and it's going to produce in your life. So the first component uh, that love, when you mix love and faith together, it is activated. And so part of that word activated is active. Active. If, you're, if your faith is going to be active, then your, your love walk has to be active. Renewing your mind to the love of God. One, one preacher said that we should read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4 through 8, every morning. Amen. Every morning. Love is patient. Love is kind. <laughs> Amen. And uh, if, we could, if we could grow in just those, those two first attributes of the love of God, we, we'd probably be considered spiritual giants. <laughs> if you could walk in patience and kindness, praise God. I read the Amplified Bible today of... Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and it said it said uh, one translation said not so much the patience aspect of the love of God is so much the waiting part of it but your attitude while waiting I was like Lord come on I mean he just goes right to the heart of the man it's not so much that you're waiting but it's your attitude while waiting Woo! I said Lord help us and so faith, number one, is activated by the love of God. Secondly, the Bible said it is energized by the love of God. And so if your faith seems like it's lost pizzazz or zeal that you once had for the things of God, then uh, you've got to check the heart and the heart motives. Because the Lord said this way to me, minister to me, that son, anytime your motives are, are anything other than the love of God, you're going to lose energy. You're going to lose momentum. Your faith will not uh, have the energy that it should have. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so several years ago, my, I was having lunch there. and We, we were in Bible school and I was uh, having mac and cheese, macaroni and cheese. And the, and the television came on and they showed, they showed these kids didn't have anything to eat. Here I am trying to eat my mac and cheese. And uh, the, the love of God is almost indescribable. When, if He just for a moment lets you sense His compassion that He has for people. It's, it's almost it's overwhelming. And I said, Lord, when you put us in a position, when you put us in a position by your grace, we're going to sponsor 10 orphans a month. 10 orphans a month. But I said, I'm not going to wait till then. We're going to start sponsoring one orphan a month. So they got something. At least we can make a difference. Amen. Well, that's a whole lot better than sitting at the house feeling sorry for yourself. Praise God. At least you know, I've got purpose on the earth. My, you know, I, I've reached out in compassion. Some, some child has something to eat because, uh, because I'm ministering by faith and uh, by prayer and by financial giving. You know, to organizations that, that help feed kids. Amen? And I highly recommend uh, Life Today, James Robeson. Amen? Highly recommend that ministry. They're, they're doing great things to feed hungry people. Not just spiritually, but also naturally. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, thirdly, faith is expressed. So faith has an expression through the love of God. And then fourthly, it's working through love. Amen? Now, uh, I want to read you in, in verse 9, please, if we could. We're going to go a little further down in the chapter for tonight. But, but Paul said by the Spirit that a little leaven, in other words, what he means by a little leaven, if we get off course slightly, in other words, if, if the church, you know, thank God for outreaches, thank you, but, but our primary mission is to go into all the world and preach the good news of Jesus Christ. And we are called to help the poor. We are called to feed. We are called to clothe. And, but those uh, missions are kind of secondary to our primary mission of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the first need of mankind is always spiritual. 
Some of you can find the most pitiful person you've ever seen. But their primary need is spiritual. They need Jesus. They need the Holy Spirit in their heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So if we get off course a little bit, a little leaven, a slight inclination to error, or a few false teachers, leavens the whole lump. It perverts the whole conception of faith or misleads the whole church. Paul said, went on to say, For my part, I have confidence towards you in the Lord that you will take no contrary view of the matter, but will come to think with me. He who is unsettling you, whoever he is, will have to bear the penalty. So there was the reason for the controversy and the strife. There were false teachers in the church. And they were trying to bring you know, new converts back under the law of Moses. And so he said, our faith and our trust has to be entirely in Christ Jesus. And also, not only that, but our faith is not going to work properly unless we, we have the love of God. Let that be our, our motive for our faith to work. Amen? Amen? Now let's go a little further. And I, I, I know this is going to bless you tonight. Praise God. This is uh, You'd be glad you came to church. But in verse 13, and the Holy Spirit was emphasizing this verse to me uh, a lot of today. He said, For brethren, Paul said, You have been called unto liberty. Oh, thank you, Lord. Freedom from 613 ordinances under the law of Moses. Be thankful. Some people say, well, Pastor, I'd come to church on Wednesday. It's a little inconvenient. Be thankful you didn't come to church under the Old Testament, Amen. under the Old Covenant. When they said it took a while to get ready for a meeting, it, it took a while. Because they had to bring the precise uh, you know, sacrifices. They had to bring exactly what was required. Amen. And, uh, uh, you know, so Paul said, now we've been called to liberty in Christ. Our freedom. But what did he say about that liberty? He said, don't use liberty as an occasion to the flesh, but by love, serve one another. By love, serve. Pastor, how do I know I'm starting to walk in love? How do I know that? One of the primary uh, uh, fruits of that will be that you... That you're, you know, you're, you're not always on your mind. Yes. <laughs> Amen. So when we're not walking in love, we, we ourselves are always on our mind. Me, 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 and me. Amen. Me, myself, and I. But when you start to walk in love, you say, Lord, I yield to the love of God that's in my heart. I, I want to ask you this. How does faith come? By hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, 17, right? How does the love of God come? This is, this, this is not a trick question because you confess Jesus as Lord. Romans 5, 5 says the love of God is shed in your heart by the Holy Spirit. The love of God is not shed in your head and it's not in your flesh. So some people are trying to wait to get a loving feeling to walk in love or forgiveness. But it's in your heart. It's in your spirit. Your born again spirit. The love of God is in there. Amen. But how do I know I'm yielded to that love? I start thinking about ways to serve others. Amen. You get yourself off your mind. You say, Father, how can I serve you? And you'll say, well, you can serve me by serving others. Amen. So, uh, uh, what did he say? Don't use that liberty as the cage to the flesh, but by love serve one another. The Amplified Bible, verse 13 says, For you, brethren, were called to freedom. Only do not let your freedom be an incentive to your flesh and an opportunity or an excuse for selfishness. For selfishness. The primary, uh, one of the primary uh, indicators of, of the flesh is self-centeredness, selfishness. Thinking always of self. How does this affect me? Love of God's always like... How? How does this affect the other person? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So by love, serve one another. An opportunity or excuse, but through love you should serve one another. Then, verse 14, please. For the whole law concerning human relationships, and you know uh, uh, Many of the Ten Commandments are concerning human relationships. Some of them are our relationship with God, some with each other. But he said, it's compiled with this one precept. You shall love your neighbor 
as you do yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, so you see what kind of spirit has been, you know, talked about in the news. This kind of they bite and devour one another in partisan strife. You heard that word partisan? Political term. But in partisan strife, be careful that you and your whole fellowship are not consumed by one another. But I say, Paul said, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit. What did he mean by that? Responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Responded to, responsive to, controlled and guided by the Spirit. Amen. And then what did he say? You will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh of human nature without God. Hallelujah. This is shout message right here. Now the works of the flesh. Now notice he's going to contrast the works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit. What are we working on? The fruit of the Spirit. We're working on the fruit of the Spirit, aren't we? Yeah. Isn't that right? How do you know an apple tree is an apple tree? Eventually, you're going to have some apples coming. Out. How do you know a Christian Christian tree is a Christian tree? You ought to start to see some some kind of love somewhere, some kind of joy somewhere, some kind of peace somewhere, some kind of gentleness and long suffering and all that good. Now, now somebody's grow, growing. Somebody's not a Christian toddler anymore. Amen. Praise God. But this is works. Versus fruit. And you understand that uh, the church at that time was very works minded. Very, you know. And he said these are the works of the flesh. They're, they are uh, uh, listed here. Adul adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, um, idolatry. That's, you know, anything that takes the place of God in our lives. Or anyone. Witchcraft, hatred. Variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I've told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, the number one fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. The number one fruit of the Spirit is love, the love of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> and then there's joy and there's peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness. The world considers meekness as weakness. But meekness is not weakness. Meekness is spiritual strength. Temperance, that's a, that's a good temper. Against such there is no law. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh because your flesh still wants to dominate your life. Just because you got born again does not mean that your flesh got born again. Anybody out there? Just just wink or blink twice at the you don't have to wink, but you can blink twice at the preacher. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> So there's some uh, crucifying the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. Now let's look at Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8, we're still talking to you about faith that works by love. Amen. And I'm convinced of this, that the church will see greater and more supernatural results as we become doers of the word and not just hearers only. So thank God for taking notes and thank God that we read our Bibles. But uh, we, we need to start being doers of what the word of God said. Put it into practice. Amen. Now notice Romans chapter 8 please. There is therefore now no condemnation. No condemnation. To them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So we're no longer in Christ pursuing the things of the flesh, but the things of the Spirit. Say it out loud. For the law of the Spirit 
of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now I want you to know every sickness, every disease is under the law of sin and death. But there is a higher law. Somebody say higher law. It's the law of, the, of life in Christ Jesus. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus. For what the law could not do, and, and now you know, if you read this in context of Galatians 5 and you put them together, you see that, that uh, Paul is elaborating on why they couldn't put their trust in the law to save them. They had to put their trust in Christ Jesus. Only in Jesus could they be saved. For what the law could not do, it was weak through the flesh. God sent in His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. And here's the second time He said it. In a few verses. Who walk, what? Not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And you know that no baby is born knowing and learn, knowing how to walk. Right? And, and, and spiritual development parallels physical development when the baby can hold their head up by themselves that's a big deal you know when they, when they, when they can uh, you know when they roll over by themselves that's a big deal amen when you know when, when a Christian starts to grow spiritually first time they put their flesh in there First time they let the fruit of the Spirit come forth. It's a big deal. Start to start to crawl. And now he's teaching. We say, Lord, teach us how to walk after the Spirit or pursuing the things of the Spirit instead of pursuing the things of the flesh. Teach us, Lord, how to do that. And that's what he's doing. He's showing us in his word how to walk in the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh, notice verse 5, please, do mind. The things of the flesh. How do you know somebody is walking in the flesh or after things? That's always what's on their mind. Things of the flesh. Well, come to church. I can't come to church, man. I got, you know, the whole list, list of things of the flesh. That a hundred years from now is not going to mean anything. But there's not one thing that you've done for the Lord that's not recorded and rewarded. I don't think I ever said it that way before, but there's not anything you've done for the Lord that's not recorded and rewarded. Hallelujah. So you don't lose your reward, anything you've done in the Spirit for, for the Lord. So the, the people after the flesh, they mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, are you after the Spirit tonight? Yeah. I believe you are. You wouldn't be here on a Wednesday night. The things of the Spirit. So there are things of the flesh. There are things of the Spirit. There are works of the flesh. There are fruit of the Spirit. Praise God. And so, because the carnal mind, now he's, he's dealing with our thinking. Say, if we're going to change our walk in the Spirit, our, we're going to have to change our thinking. The carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither in can, indeed can be. The literal Greek says it's hostile to God. The carnal mind is. It does not submit itself to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now you take that 8th verse of the 8th chapter of Romans and, and, and look at it in the light of Hebrews 11.6. So then without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we know that faith starts to walk after the Spirit when you start to walk after the Spirit, He's going to teach you how to walk in love. And it's a process. <laughs> and just because you missed it somewhere, don't let the devil put condemnation on you and, and beat you up. Just say, Lord, I missed it. I, 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 I didn't walk in love towards that person. I, I, I repent. I put that under the blood of Jesus. Forgive me. Amen. And then, and then move forward. Somebody say move forward. move forward. So you are not living the life of the flesh in verse 9 amplified. You're living the life of the Spirit. If the Holy Spirit really dwells with you, within you, directs and controls you, but if anyone does not possess the Holy Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He does not belong to Christ. He's not truly a child of God. And so you might have heard this expression in the world. The world says, we're all children of God. 
but they left out the primary part, which is through faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, we are all the children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. You just can't say we're all the children of God because uh, unless you're born again, your, your spirit is not, is not uh, put, put faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen. And so Jesus is not one of the ways to the Father. He's the way and the truth and the life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we love you enough to tell the truth about it. We're not confused about the matter. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know, the world's very confused. Yes. They really are. Yeah. So we need to get them saved. <laughs> yeah. There's no need to try to reason with them, you know, or have debate with them. They need to be born again. They need to hear the gospel and believe the gospel and be born again. Yeah. Repentance toward God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Receive the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you or lives in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify, and remember Galatians 5 said crucify the flesh, Mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Amen? Amen? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many as are led, say it out loud, as many as are led, many are led by the Spirit of God, Spirit of God they, are the sons of God. they are the sons of God. Now let's look again at the great love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. We alluded to that. And, uh, it would be a good practice to read it every morning. <laughs> read it every morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm reading you from the Amplified 1 Corinthians 13, 4. This is the love of God that, that is defined. And the love of God defined said that love endures long. Help us, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. It endures long. Doesn't it? Yeah. I was getting ready to say long sermons, but I, that was just, I, was just kidding. I was just kidding with you. Love endures long. And secondly, it is patient and kind. Help us, Lord. Oh, Lord, help us. I was at the bank a few years ago standing a long line at the bank. Long line at the bank. Long line at the bank. I said, Lord, I'm a long line at the bank. A long line at the bank. And so I was moving, you know, kind of slow, real slow line. And, you know, I was, uh, I really, I really was uh, kind of an expert in uh, efficiency and expeditiousness and moving things. That's probably not a word, but, you know, expediting things, making things very efficient, very organized. Move, 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 you know, like almost like a machine. And this line was not moving that way. So, 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 get tempted to gripe and complain. And finally, the Holy Spirit spoke in my heart and said, at least you have something to deposit. So, there comes many marvelous opportunities for attitude adjustment. Amen? And instead of griping, we get uh, thankful. I said we're thankful. Right. Amen. Right. Father God loves us. We are His very own child. He takes care. He watches over us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. Watchfully and affectionately, He watches us. Love is not envious, never envious, nor boils over with jealousy. It is not boastful or vainglorious. It does not display itself haughtily. We're walking in love, right? It is not conceited, right? It's not arrogant or inflated with pride. The Lord said to me, every uh, place that you let pride come into your heart, into your mind, into your thinking is a blind spot. It sets up blinds where you think you see, but you don't see. Because that pride has blinded you to the truth. 
Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, the love of God is 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 not arrogant and flayed with pride. It's not it's not rude because what does the Bible say about it? It says that uh, that love always builds up. How can again? What's another characteristic of love? Love is always building up. Pride is puffed up. Well, I went to Raymond. Well, so what? If the Lord didn't send you there and you and you didn't have the right heart about it. You, you miss what God had for you. If you got puffed up in pride, you know, you're super faith man or, or a woman or something. It's only by the, it's by the grace of God we get out of bed in the morning. It's by the grace of God we sleep eight hours. It's by the grace of God we walk in supernatural divine heaven. It's by the grace of God we receive our healing, our provision, our supernatural protection, our blessing from the Lord God. It's not we ourselves that are so incredible or great without Him. You know, the reality is without Him, we can do nothing. No thing. <laughs> and so how do, you, how do you know the love of God? It, it, it always builds up. It's always built. It's always supportive, encouraging. How do I know it comes from the Spirit of God? It's building you up. The enemy's trying to tear you down. God's building you up. Amen. And that love is just stopped. It's puffed up. Puffy. That's how Lucifer became Satan. Pride. Through pride. He said, he said five I will declarations. God answered him. God answered him with five I wills. He said, I will be like the most high. God, God answered every one of them. And cast him out of heaven as profane. There's no pride in heaven. There's six things the Lord hates. Seven are an abomination to them. Number one is a proud look. That's a look of defiance. It's a look of rebellion. God's word is spoken with. Now, nah, now, nah, now. Nah. That's pride. I said it's pride. Well, I don't need this love message. I'm, I'm doing fine. No, we have. We we need it. Lord, help us. We we definitely need to grow in it. God's love is not uh, inflated with pride. It's not rude. God's love is not unmannerly. I, if, if somebody is born again, I don't care what, what nation they're from or culture, if they hear the gospel, they're born again, they truly get filled with the Holy Spirit, they, they might not even have a course on etiquette, but probably some of the most mannered people you've ever met. Just because they truly received, they got born again, received the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. You start holding the door open for people. You stop trying to race them into Cracker Barrel. Stop trying to race them in Walmart. You ever seen people come to the front door of a store or something like that? They're, they're going their normal pace and they see you. It's like, hey, you, you, you know... If, 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 you, if, you, if you get there first, and it's great, you know. But, you know, I, I, I used to race them. <laughs> and I, I tried to preach under heavy anointing. I said, Lord, what's going on? He said, you, you can't let little foxes like that, you know, spoil what I called you to do. Let them get there if they want to get there. Let them, you know. Amen. I said, Amen. Love does not rejoice. Oh man, I skipped this part. It it it's uh, does not insist on its own rights. You can you can hear the flesh is like flesh wants the remote control. All right, I guess we'll get off of that. Love says, what do you want to watch, honey? All right, so... Oh, that's for the marriage conference. Never mind. Okay, I'll, I'll say you that one. But... <laughs> Praise God. Marriage conference coming soon. Amen. So love is not... Uh, insist on its own rights or its own way for it's not self-seeking, it's not touchy. Mm -hmm. 
People lose their joy or their victory for a week because somebody, somebody offended them, you know. Not touching. Somebody said to, 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 you know, walk in the office of a pastor, you got a, you know, real thick skin and a real soft heart. So you, you don't, you're not touching, you know. Let, let little things steal your joy, steal your peace. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. We're not touchy up in here. We're not, uh, you know, this is a drama-free zone. Rivers of Living Water Church. 100% drama-free. Praise God. Strife-free, contention-free. We're not touchy. Amen. It's not fretful or resentful. Takes no account to the evil done to it. Oh, man. Some people, you know, got a got an account. Years gone by, and they and they hold it against people. Pays no attention to a sucker wrong. Pastor, don't you, you know? Uh, years ago, I, I've told this story before, but I think it's very relevant to the text. The the only exercise Brother Hagen liked to do, you, you know, when he got in his 60s and 70s, doctors told him, you know, you should do some kind of exercise. So the only one he would do is swimming. So we had to, somebody from the ministry come by, they, they would do little laps, you know, swimming. And this young man came and he was he was just incensed. He was so angry. Some, somebody took out a two-page ad in the Tulsa world. Uh, you know, it's called DPS double-page spread. They took out it. They spent a lot of money. Said so I challenge Kenneth E. Hagin to a debate. He is wrong. He's wrong here. He's wrong there. He's wrong. And this young man from Rent, he was so mad. So he, he had the newspaper in his arm, and he, he comes to the door for you know he's like a, the trainer to do Brother Hagin's exercise. He said, "Can you believe this, Brother Hagin?" He's you know he said, "What is it?" He said, "Oh, this guy challenging you," and 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 he didn't even look at it. He didn't even look at the paper. He said, "He said that's a shame, man." Let's go swimming. Come on. You didn't even look at it. He told us, he said, he said, I've been criticized by experts. <laughs> so he said, I don't even let the little spurts bother me. <laughs> Praise God. Love takes no account. You're growing in it. The enemy's trying to push your button. Oh, I got a response from them last time. I, 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 this, this, is, this worked. Well, now watch this. This worked last time. But, but you're starting to grow in the love of God. Your faith is growing. Your shield of faith is up. And you say, I'm not falling for that. Enemy, I'm not losing ground. I'm not opening the door. I give, I give the devil no place. You're in Christ Jesus. The devil has no place unless you give him place. And so the Bible says, neither give him no place or any place. Amen. Is that right? Hallelujah. So, uh, love uh, bears up. Now, it does not rejoice at injustice or unrighteousness, but it rejoices when right and truth prevail. So, right and truth will prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Oh, you see where we got to renew our mind. <laughs> Amen. It's ever, its hopes are faithless under all circumstances. It endures everything without weakening. This is the power of God. This is, this is the virtue that flowed from the Lord Jesus when the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of His garment. Compassion of the Lord, the power of God, flowed from Him into her and drove out that disease. Hallelujah. So when she was filled with the love of God, she's filled with the power of God. There was no place for fear and there was no place for sickness. Got so full of the Spirit. Got so full of the anointing. There was no place for the devil's job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, church historians tell us that they tried to, to uh, put the Apostle John to death because he would not stop preaching Jesus. He would not stop preaching Jesus Christ. Some, uh, some church historians said they tried to boil him in a vat of hot oil. They heated up oil and tried to boil him in a vat of hot oil. 
but they could not destroy him. He was so full of the love of God. If you read 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, he's so full of the love of God. They had to exile him to an island. <laughs> and at the island, he has the revelation of the Lord Jesus, the glorified Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love never fades. Love never fails. It never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. Amen. All those other gifts uh, will, will come to an end because when we're in heaven, you don't need to work knowledge. <laughs> you, you don't need healing. You, you understand you don't need financial breakthrough in heaven. But here on the earth, we need those uh, spiritual gifts in, in this fallen world. I want to read you one more scripture in closing. Uh, Romans chapter 12, please. Romans chapter 12. I've been thinking about this with, uh, you know, on, on the social media. They've been commentating on, on some different uh, tragic events that have happened in our nation recently here in our state. But I think about Romans chapter 12, the instruction to the church. And, and verse 9 says, let love, Romans 12, 9, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. The Amplified of the Greek said in verse 9, let your love be sincere, a real thing. Hate what is evil. Loathe all ungodliness. Turn in horror from wickedness, but hold fast to that which is good. Yeah, now, notice this please. Verse uh, Man, this, the whole thing is good, but just for time's sake. Verse 17, please. Recompense to no man evil for evil. So even some Christians have their own version of the golden rule. They say, do unto others as they do unto you. That's not what Jesus said. He said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Not as they've done to you, but as you. So recompense or pay back no man evil for I'm preaching to myself. Evil for evil. Preaching to myself also. Because you know the flesh rises up. So I take your parking space. You just came out of church. Now I know y'all are too spiritual. No, I'm telling you, just pray for your pastor. But you know, sometimes your, flip, your feathers get rougher. Right? Your flesh didn't get born again. It's your spirit. Your heart got born again. Right? Repay no one evil for evil, but take thought for what is honest and proper, noble, aiming to be above reproach in the sight of everyone. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. If it depends on you, if it's going to be up to me, it's going to be peace. Beloved, never avenge yourselves. Amen. But leave the way open for God's wrath. For it's written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, requite, says the Lord. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. What? What version you got, Pastor? <laughs> King James and Amplified. If he's thirsty, give him drink. Yep. Say what? For by so doing, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Ooh. Pastor Bev, you want to say, share what the Lord showed you? About that. You want to share that? The Lord showed my wife years ago. She, he showed her and said, This is like a New Testament burnt offering. If you do it, because you don't have burnt offerings in the New Testament, you got them under the Old Testament. But if you do this heaping coals of fire, when you start doing walking in love towards your enemy, he says, it's Like a New Testament burnt offering. So what did 21 say? Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. I'm sharing this one last testimony, but there was a, a, a preacher that was over in, the, in, the, uh, in Russia preaching the gospel. And some of the soldiers got agitated. The devil stirred up some of those soldiers. They got agitated. And, and the one man was, was speaking to them. He was, he was telling him, like, get out of here. And he said, he said, love is stronger than hate. And that soldier got closer, and he was real intimidated. Yeah, I should get out of here. And he said, love is stronger than hate. And he got, like, right up to his eyeball. 
I said, I'm saying get out of here. He said, love is stronger than hate. And that soldier turned around, and he's the one that left. Amen. Somebody should say, the love of God that sent me is stronger than the hatred in the world. I'm not going to be overcome with evil. But I overcome evil with good. Love never fails. The love of God's in my heart. And I yield to His love. By His grace, I'm growing in love every day. Every day. Making progress in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now we're, we're going to go out and, and walk in this word, aren't we? Is that right? Doers of the word? Amen. Father, we pray over this word tonight, the incorruptible seed of the word of God. And I thank you, Lord, the Holy Spirit. Help us put a watch over our heart. We'll not let the enemy steal the seed that was sown in our hearts. But help us, God, to grow in love, to walk in love. For our faith only works through the love of God. So help us to remember that and walk in it. And, sir, we thank you for the word again tonight. And thank you, Lord, for improving every area of our lives that we might be blessed to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? Amen. 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 Have a wonderful week this week. God bless you.